The skink picked its way carefully towards the stepped pyramid that lay overgrown and half-hidden beneath a sea of vegetation. It paused, listening for the crowded sound of birds that usually hung over the tropical land. There was nothing. The silence was unusual and menacing. Carefully, the skink began to climb the cracked stone steps, its head darting warily from side to side. From its vantage point, it could see others of its spawning stepping silently through the undergrowth below. As it neared the summit of the pyramid, it halted, looking down. The crest on its head changed from a dull green to a bright red, a warning signal to the saurus marching through the undergrowth below. Sun gleamed off bright bronze armour as the resplendent ranks of lizardmen came to a halt. Far in the distance, a lone monkey howled before absolute silence descended, as thick and heavy as the humid air itself. The blue-scaled skink stood motionless on the steps of the crumbling pyramid, glassy eyes fixed on the spawning pool below. The water was foul and corrupted, its surface black and reeking of disease. Deformed, unborn creatures could be seen below the surface, frozen in the desperate struggle to break free from the poisonous fluids. Some had tried to emerge, their bodies locked in contorted death throes. Filled with hatred and despair, the skink swung its gaze to the other spawning pools. But they too were fetid, horribly contaminated by unholy poison. A strange sound emanated from the archway behind the skink, and its head came up sharply. The cold-blooded creature got a quick glimpse of movement, evil red eyes and cracked yellow teeth partially hidden beneath tatted robes before the heavy flail trailing, coiling green smoke, impacted with its head. Bone shattered, and the skink was thrown off the stepped pyramid, landing heavily a dozen steps below before continuing to tumble to the base. Bloody and broken, its body landed in the mist of the motionless column of lizardmen. The Saurus raised their heavy heads towards the overgrown pyramid above. The sound of claws, scratching against stone, carried across the heavy air, and an unending swarm of small pallid shapes could be seen pushing from the deep cracks and fissures in the ancient pyramid structure. Countless thousands of clawing vermin, their fur patchy and diseased, descended the pyramid in a living tide. They swarmed over the lizard men, who swatted at the scurrying creatures with heavy talons, the plagued rodents climbing thick scaled legs, biting frantically and flowing across the saurus. Several of the powerful lizard men were swept to the ground and were quickly lost from sight, covered by the frenzied vermin. Dark figures could be seen scrambling from within the ancient structure, emerging from the shadowed doorways at the top of the pyramid. Screaming, the robed plague monks hurled themselves down the steps towards the lizard men, their tattered robes flowing behind them like ragged wings. The plague monks leapt off the pyramid steps, their blackened claws outstretched towards the Saurus warriors. The faces of the Skaven were foul and diseased, their fur matted and patchy, eyes milky and filled with repugnant sickness. Their expressions were twisted into visages of madness and hate. They impacted against the burly Saurus warriors with tremendous force, forcing back many of them into their comrades behind. The plague monks lashed out around them in frenzy, not caring who they struck friend or foe, eyes wild and foam dripping from the corners of their mouths. Teeth, claws and serrated blades slashed left and right, ripping at both tough lizardmen hides and softer furred flesh. The Saurus bellowed their rage, striking out with their primitive weapons and snapping bones in their vice-like jaws. A towering croxigore roared its outrage as it stomped its heavy feet onto the scurrying vermin, raising its heavy obsidian axe over its head. It swept the weapon down in a vicious arc, smashing a plague-ridden skaven into the lush earth. A wicked blade was plunged into its leg, and the huge lizardman monster snarled, dropping its weapon. 
Turning with surprising swiftness, it grabbed the skaven who was trying to wrench its blade from the creature's thigh. Hefting the ratman into the air, the Croxagor slammed the twisted creature into the ancient pyramid, splattering gore across the pale stone. Countless blades slashed the thick skin of the Croxagor, and it swung around, heavy fists crunching bone as they struck twisted skaven bodies. Thick green smoke descended around the Lizardmen formation as a group of fanatical sensor bearers threw themselves from a stone platform above, smashing into the ranks of the Saurus. Several of the burly Saurus sank to the ground, gasping for air as the burning fumes were inhaled deeply into their lungs. A heavy spiked ball, oozing the evil smoke, smashed into the Croxagore's cheekbone, knocking the creature to one side. Shaking its head briefly, it turned to face its assailant. Half of the lizardman's face was blistering and liquefying, its eyes turning a sickening pale colour. It bared its teeth, grabbing the frenzied skaven in its powerful arms. Plunging its head downwards, the croxigore clamped its jaws under the plague monk's neck, wrenching away a huge chunk of flesh in a spray of blood and fur. The croxigore spat out the foul meat, blood dripping between its teeth. Another plague sensor was swung at the Croxagore, striking heavily at the immense creature's knee. Its leg buckled beneath it, and a swarm of Skaven leapt atop the fallen lizard men, their blades rising and falling in a bloody fury. Still, the creature struggled, choking the life out of another plague monk, crushing its neck in one huge hand. Frantically, the Skaven hacked at the Croxagore until it was awash in dark blood, but still the creature held its grip even in death. The plague monks quickly overran the surviving Saurus warriors as more of the crazed Skaven emerged from the darkness within the pyramid, hacking apart the lizardmen corpses long after they had fallen. One of the Skaven raised his voice in a high-pitched chant as he held a jagged knife in both hands, high above his head, the last of the Saurus beneath him. A hoarse shout cut through the crazed plague monk's frenzy, and he paused blinking his eyes. A hunched and heavily robed figure hobbled forward, a twisted staff clutched tightly in his decaying, shaking fingers. Again, he shouted at the plague monk, sickly spittle spraying from his mouth. And the Skaven backed away from the intended victim. At the Skaven's impatient motions, several plague monks leapt forward to pin the powerful Saurus limbs. The lizard man glowered up at the heavily cloaked plague priest standing above it a dull growl echoing from within its barrel chest. Fumbling with a dark, musty pouch, the plague priest pulled out a white rat, its eyes oozing foul fluids. The skaven patted the rat lovingly as it squirmed in his hands. Barking another order, the plague monks tightened their grip on the saurus. Bones creaking, the plague priest knelt over the lizard man, holding the rat towards it. The saurus snapped its jaws at the rodent, and the plague priest pulled his pet back protectively. The plague priest stroked the rat lovingly, shuffling closer. Holding the rodent firmly, dug a cracked black claw deep into its mangy body. The rat squealed in distress, and the owner thrust it towards the lizard man again. The rat struggled as it was squeezed painfully, just out of reach of the snarling saurus. Corrupt, diseased blood dripped from the rat into the open mouth of the lizard man. Satisfied, the plague priest stood, shoving the limp body of the rat back into a pouch with an affectionate pat. He motioned, and the plague monks raised the lizard man to its feet. Raising a cudgel, a skaven clubbed the lizard man heavily across the back of the head, and it collapsed unconscious to the ground. Now, lizard thing, take, take your precious yellow skull fever back to your brood den. A gurgling laugh bubbled within the plague priest's chest as he turned and stalked away, leaning heavily on his crooked staff.